What's going on, movie goers? If you're new to the channel, my name is Christian. Welcome to Sea Roll Productions, you guys. Just some quick thoughts on the first episode of Loki season two, you guys. Now streaming on Disney Plus, and boy oh boy, you guys, it literally picks up right where the epic conclusion of season one left off. This first episode really, really felt like finally we are taking another step towards the future of the next big bad, of that being Kang the Conqueror, he who remains. And when I say this, you guys, I mean this shit. Loki season two, episode one, Kang was more terrifying, more terrifying than the entirety of his appearance in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. And keep this in mind, Kang never appeared once in this first episode. He was, it was just based off of Loki really just fearing him. And the, the, the acting Tom, Tom Hiddleston really portrayed in every scene when he was talking about he who remains. Not once did he say Kang. Didn't know his real name. He who remains. The, he, the fear that was just showcasing through his eyes was so good. It got me excited for Kang. And I was like, man, I haven't been excited for Kang since freaking, you know, Season one, because we all can admit that while Kang the Conqueror and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumanium was cool, he got beat by Ant-Man. This is the next big bad who's supposed to take on the Avengers, the multiverse Avengers, of that being Wolverine, Deadpool, Spider-Man. He got beat by Ant-Man and some ants. Now, some can argue, oh, he was the weaker version of Kang. That was the, that was the bottom version of Kang. Okay, cool, whatever. He still got defeated by Ant-Man. Boring. So, I can't wait to see what Jonathan Majors has in store for this second season of him playing Victor Timely. Um, I did see some early non-spoiler reviews, and a lot of people were kind of skeptical on his character and his portrayal and the kind of energy he kind of brought to this particular character in season two. Which, you know... <laughs> I'm okay with it's it's something good. It, Victor Timely is not Kang the Conqueror. It's somebody completely different. So it's not the Council of Kangs we saw at the end of Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. So a completely different Kang, or you know, he who remains that we will we will get to see in Loki season two. But this first episode really solidified itself of just really having, yo, the MTU is back and it's back on track. While I did love Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, it was still a self-contained story within that trilogy. Guardians of the Galaxy never really, you know, other than the first movie of, of seeing Thanos, right? There was never no lead to what's, what's coming next or the continuity. Because like I've stated in multiple videos, multiple projects within phase four and phase five feel like these little old projects just chilling over here on its own island no continuity nothing and the fact that loki really gave you that shot of adrenaline like he who remains is still going to be the next big bad he's still coming get ready things are going to get crazy it got me that much more excited for avengers of king dynasty because honestly after quantum i was like eh, okay whatever he got defeated by ant-man my hype level of king kind of dropped but after this first episode, and this is just the first episode, I had no idea what to expect going through the next six episodes, you guys. We could see the Council of Kangs. It's going to be crazy, and I cannot wait for it. But, you know, Mobius and Loki, their dynamic friendship is just so lovable. It's believable. You want them on screen every single time. You, I love the way they interact. I love Mobius' subtle little hints of humor. You know what I mean? Oh, I kind of got to peel off my skin. <laughs> that It was just great. And Tom Hiddleston just embodies the role. He is a Loki and he is fully embracing it to its top tier. And I'm just so excited for this particular character moving forward. I hope he plays Loki forever. That's what it seems like. You know what I mean? It seems like other MCU actors are kind of branching off and wanting to do other things, but I can't name you anything Tom Piddles has done over the last five years that's not been Loki based. He's really embracing this character. He's like, you know what? This is who I am. This is the character I'm going to be and I, and I love it and, you know, I'm going to be doing this for, you know, as long as Marvel Studios wants me to do this. So, you know, Loki and Mobius together are just pitch perfect. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pitch perfect. Um, Kiki Kwan, in addition to 
Loki season two as, what's his name? Oh my God, Obi? I think his name was Obi. Phenomenal, lovable, adorable. He's a tech guy in the TVA. Every time he was on screen, he demanded my attention. He was just so smart. It was very engaging. Wonderful addition in that first episode. I'm like, oh, absolutely. I need more of Kiki Kwan in Loki season two. We only got to see Sylvie at the very end of the show. post credit scene. You know what I mean? She's, she's, she still has that. I forgot what that time door is or whatever. She's traveling to like Oklahoma in like 1982. She's going to eat at McDonald's for the first time. And she wants everything off the menu. I'm like, okay, I can get behind this. Do I need a snag me? A, uh, you know, a, a McDouble while I watch Loki episode two, even though I don't eat McDonald's, you guys, I'm sorry. I don't eat McDonald's. Not a fan. Um, but just everything from the set designs, the, the score, everything man it was so spot on i love how it just picked up and ran and didn't stop it kept going and going and going and i whole i love the whole crazy explanation of the whole you know the the, the phasing oh it's like oh my god i'm totally drawing a blank where he's like phasing in and out kind of like the spider-verse films the timeless i forgot what it's called totally phasing out in my head dude <laughs> but i love that whole explanation and i love how obi was like trying to explain to you know, Mobius and Loki that you guys have to work together in order to, you know, to fix this. You have to prune yourself and you have to be over here a certain time. And when it turns green, you have, it was just, it was so fun. And it was, it was really engaging. Not a dull, boring moment in this first episode. And that was just the first episode. Things are going to go, things are going to go so much faster, I feel like. And I am 100% behind it. The TVA, all the agents, what are they up to? What are they cooking? They're going after Sylvie. But it seems like they're bringing the heavy cavalry. It seems like they're going all in. So I'm excited. I can't wait for next week, you guys. I'm super pumped. The end of the week, so we get Gen V and we get Loki. Let's go. That's like the best, you know, weekend thing we can have right now. I mean, both shows are phenomenal. I can't wait to watch um, episode four of Gen V. I'm probably going to watch that tomorrow when I have time. I can't wait, you guys. Loki, season two, episode one. A lot of fun. Really hyped. The MCU is back on track, finally. Finally, until the Marvels comes out. And, <laughs> and you know, it just dwindles everything once again. <laughs> Unless the Marvels is wonderful, big, fantastic, fun, and has some kind of continuity of what we are leading towards, then I'm okay with it. I just want continuity. I want things to make sense. Make it make sense. That's what I want. I, that's what I need from the MCU moving forward. I want that. Post your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about Loki Season 2, Episode 1. Thoughts and opinions, you guys? Post your comments down below and let me know. Peace.